So when the Nothing Phone 1 first launched, it was essentially a hype monster the size of Godzilla. And while almost all of the excess attention was focused on that bizarre flashing back, I was personally more concerned with the bugs and the other issues that plagued this chunky chap even after it went on sale. But thankfully, one month on and after several updates, the Nothing Phone has settled right down to the point where it's actually one of the better mid-range mobiles you can snaffle yourself in 2022. Now I've been using it on and off for the past month and I've had my sim slapped in there full time for the last few days to see if it really is worth your cash. So here's my full Nothing Phone 1 review and for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! So when I first covered the Nothing Phone 1, it had only just been launched a few days prior and it was still buggier than a barrel full of beetles. But thankfully since then, Nothing has beamed out a couple of massive updates over the air and these seem to have kicked most of these glitches right in the happy sack. So that means for the past couple of weeks, no crashes whatsoever to speak of and very little in the way of UI shithousery. These over-the-air updates have also made some improvements to the overall Nothing launcher experience. Little things like allowing you to ditch the search bar from the desktop, thank god. Like, we already have so many ways of performing a search on this thing. You can activate the Google Assistant with a swipe up from the corner or by using your voice. You can even just swipe it this way and there's another search bar right there. Like, it's the equivalent of those high streets where you've got like two or three Gregs basically side by side. Like, one Greg's very useful indeed. Why do you need three? Why, how many Cornish pasties is this town consuming? And after these updates, the launcher is a bit more customizable now, although it is still lagging behind most rivals as far as personalization options do go. Definitely more of a stock Android vibe in that area. The in-display fingerprint sensor is still, for the most part, dependable as long as your digits aren't sloppy. But the major improvement as far as security goes is the face recognition. I mean, the Nothing Phone 1 now will actually admit that I do own a face. Just three weeks ago, it was like, nope, that is definitely not a face. The hair's in all the wrong places and those black soulless beads do not count as eyes. But after an update, suddenly the face recognition realizes that, yeah, this just about counts as a mug. And so now occasionally when I gurn at the smartphone, it will actually unlock the thing as well. But the lighting conditions have to be just right and the nothing phone has to be in just the right mood. Otherwise, you know, forget it. And there have been quite a few other little features added to the Nothing Phone as well, stuff that they were teasing before launch but that wasn't actually available when the phone released. So for instance, if you've helped to fund Elon Musk's ridiculous space ventures where you've now got built-in Tesla functionality here, and you've also got an NFT widget now, so idiots with far too much money can enjoy further pissing away all of their savings into an endless black hole and then just stare at whatever they've wasted their cash on right here on your very desktops. As you can see, I'm yet to partake. And it's further good news if you plan to have the Nothing Phone as your full-time smartphone for a good two or three years or so because you are guaranteed three Android OS updates and four years of security updates as well, which beats a lot of the competition and it's great to see that commitment from Nothing. Unfortunately, something that can't really be updated by a software fix is the design of this phone. The Nothing Phone 1 is a fat old iPhone style chunk monster sporting a flat aluminium frame wedged between two slabs of glass. If you don't mind having an absolute whopper stashed in your shorts, so to speak, then you might well get on with it. However, I gotta say, coming from some pleasingly compact blowers like the Pixel 6a and the Asus Zen 4 9, this does feel proper old school. There's no denying that this is a unique and original design, courtesy of Nothing's Glyph interface, aka the flashy arse disco lights, arranged in the vague outline of Totoro rocking a schlong big enough to crush a blue whale. You've got a Gorilla Glass 5 plate in front and back and I've got to say, several weeks on, this thing still looks box fresh, no scratches, scuffs, nicks or dents to speak of and that's despite the fact it's taken several tumbles off my sofa arm and a couple of tables because it is slipperier than an oiled up otter. Combine that with the weight of the thing and yeah, it just glides to the edge of absolutely anything you stick it on. Definitely want to stick it uh, back down rather than front down because yeah, at least the camera housing there helps to sort of give it some purchase. And it's also IP53 splash resistant rather than full on water resistant, which you'll get from the likes of the Samsung Galaxy A53 for instance. The Pixel 6 here as well. So while those smartphones can be submerged, this thing can put up with some drizzle basically. That Glyph interface hasn't changed up much at all. It's still a stylish glorified notifications light with a set of 10 patterns that can be assigned to individual apps or contacts for phone calls. It's not nearly as useful as the always on display of course, but it's certainly a conversation starter when you're off down the pub. Of course, the actual tone of that conversation will very much depend on your local boozer and the kind of clientele found within. 
like in an old bar one or some shortage joint, you'll probably elicit several, ooh, what's all this then? Whereas if you whip it out in, say, a traditional Yorkshire alehouse, you may very well be branded a witch and chucked down the nearest well. You can flip to glyph at any time, which activates the light notifications when that phone is laid face down. But this only seems to work on completely flat surfaces. Try it on a sofa, for instance, and chances are it just won't activate at all. As for storage, no worries there. You've got minimum 128 gigs. Otherwise, chuck a bit more money at nothing and you can upgrade to 256 gigs of space. Although, as usual, there's no micro SD memory card support. Now, like most other mobile displays at this price point, the 6.55 inch OLED screen is an absolute stunner, pumping out rich, attractive Full HD Plus visuals with full support for HDR10 Plus video. That refresh rate can be boosted to 120Hz for a smooth as butter finish, although auto brightness has a wobbler every couple of days and dims things down a little too enthusiastically. On the flip side, if you boost the brightness yourself all the way up to maximum levels, well, no worries seeing it outdoors, even when you're wearing shades, this thing is brighter than the sun. As for the built-in stereo speakers, well, they do an absolutely fine job when you're kicking back with a YouTube video, for instance, you can't be always buggering about trying to work out where your Bluetooth headphones have gone off to. Although, having said that, the wireless streaming on this thing, absolutely fine as well, streaming to speakers, headphones, no issues whatsoever these past few weeks. And the performance has also been a winner, courtesy of the Qualcomm Snapdragon 778G Plus chipset that powers the show. I found that the connectivity has been reliable throughout, and the Nothing Phone doesn't even begin to sweat throughout game after game of Call of Duty Mobile, PUBG, all those online shooty efforts. And while that flashy rear does get a little bit toasty when you really push this phone with some Genshin Impact action, it won't actually cook your fingers, and that performance does stay impressively stable. It's definitely a big step up for those more demanding titles compared with the likes of the Pixel 6a and the Samsung Galaxy A53, which definitely struggled in that department. And you've also got those dedicated gaming tools chucked on here, although they're all very similar to the Pixel 6a's, those sort of stock Android efforts where you can block notifications, got a couple more tools, nothing pan-wettingly exciting here. As for your battery life, the 4500mAh cell is a decent size, but the Nothing Phone 1 did used to struggle to survive a full day when it first launched. Thankfully, in the past few weeks, nothing seems to have worked out some of those issues, at least, that are causing the fast drain. And so now, post-update, the Nothing Phone 1 doesn't keel over quite as quick. The full charge now delivers around 6 hours of screen on time, roughly, compared with the 5-ish that it was getting when the phone first released. So, at least that's good news. It can actually survive a full day now. I tend to get to bed with just the very dregs remaining, so it's not quite as strong as some rivals, but it definitely does the job, at least. You've got 33 watt wired charging on here and also highly impressively you've got support for 15 watt wireless charging which is something that next to no rivals offer again only like the iPhone SE 2022 spit 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 and that's about it. So seriously forget the bloody disco lights this is one of this smartphone's real USPs if you want wireless charging for around this price point and you don't want to have to resort to a flagship from about two years ago job done. Now, the Nothing Phone's 50 meg Sony IMX766 camera sensor has been used in a lot of mid-range phones lately and even the occasional flagship. And more often than not, this does a great job. Although some of my recent picks on the Nothing Phone still occasionally look rather soft as if the focus didn't quite get its shit together in time. The Nothing Phone handles HDR situations well, capturing a good amount of detail in darker areas without blowing out the lighter bits. And a bright blue sky will often look exactly that rather than washed out. And likewise, I haven't seen any kind of lens flare or any other bugger about tree when I've been shooting in harsh lighting. The Nothing Phone is also a blinder when it comes to portrait shots, even when you're dealing with fast-moving subjects. Although weirdly, it now seems to take a wee while to process some portrait snaps, remaining completely unresponsive until it's all done. And that's something I didn't notice at all when the phone was first released, so maybe it's been introduced by one of these little updates. The Nothing Phone sadly doesn't perform as admirably in lower light despite the optical image stabilisation. You'll see plenty of grain and noise creeping into your pics, not to mention blur with any kind of motion despite claimed improvements in this area. And that focus definitely struggles more in lower light too. I often had to manually override it with a poke of the screen. Still, you've always got the option to absolutely blind your subject with those glyphs if you want to light the buggers up. The 50 meg ultra wide angle lens uses Samsung's GN1 sensor and you'll get some distortion around the edges of your photos and the usual colour morphing, but the actual picture quality is almost as good as any images taken with the main sensor. This is more prone to saturation in brighter light and not as capable in dimmer conditions, but it is still one of the better ultra wide shooters at this price point. 
Video can be recorded at up to 4K resolution, although if you do stick it on that Ultra HD level, you are stuck at 30 frames per second, there's no 60 FPS option. And for the first week or two that I spent with this smartphone, all of my footage looked almost cartoon-like thanks to the artificial colour boost, but thankfully one of these updates has sorted the problem right out, and now the Nothing Phone captures more natural luck in action. Image stabilisation is good enough to work against any shakes and bumps if you're moving and recording simultaneously, and audio capture is perfectly respectable, as long as there's no actual wind or anything. You could also use the ultra-wide camera to shoot video, but you'll have to select this before you start recording, as you can't switch midway through, and again the results are fine as long as the conditions aren't taxing. Up front you've got a 16 meg Sony sensor for your selfie shots, and again this is pretty good even in quite strong light. You'll get plenty of detail packed into every pic, no masking of those lines and creases at all, and the portrait smarts are also up to snuff, although like the main camera things do get soft in lower light. So overall, I gotta say, while I don't think the Nothing Phone one is as good as a Google Pixel 6a, it is a strong all-round contender now that a lot of those little bugs and quirks and weird little issues have been sorted right out. And if you are a fan of that fat boy iPhone style design, then you'll probably get on rather well with it. Gotta say, for a first-gen effort, first-gen hardware as well as software, it is a remarkably well-put-together effort, and while the Nothing Launcher by itself on a different phone feels kind of weird and out of place and just a bit basic, here on the Nothing Phone 1 it seems to work really, really well. And I'll tell you what, I'm very intrigued already to see what we get out of the Nothing Phone 2 whenever that emerges, be it 2023 or beyond. Will we get that funky disco arsen back in action or will they go with a completely different gimmick? Who even knows? But anyway, that's what I reckon of the Nothing Phone 1. It'd be great to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Have you been using it as your full-time blow? Definitely give us your mini review. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe, ding that notifications bell and have yourselves a bloody wonderful rest of the week. Cheers everyone. Love you.